I didn't have access to DEMS or even contour maps for the local course I'm designing. So I decided to use Google Earth to take the elevation data from. It's apparently 30 meter data, so it's not massively accurate, but it's good enough to get the hills and general elevations marked in. So if we look at Google Earth here, if I move my mouse around at the bottom of the screen here, you'll see numbers changing as I move the mouse. And these are the grid coordinates and also the elevation and I've set it into Imperial, so it's showing it in feet at the moment. And you can see it changing as I move my mouse. So this means I can take elevation readings just by hovering over anywhere on my course, and it will give me the height. So this green here, 121 feet. Down at this corner, 105. So by using this, I could plot the elevation around my course. I just need some points marked. So to do this, I screenshotted Google Earth into Photoshop. I'll flick over to Photoshop now. And I marked in anywhere that I thought I could take a, a reasonably accurate reading from, a corner of a field, a fairway bunker, the middle of a green, just points I could find easily on Google Earth. And so I plotted red marks, just painted them in with a paintbrush, just made a red spot all around my course where I was going to take elevation readings from. Now once I'd done this, I would look at a spot, say this corner, I would flick back to Google Earth and I'd check it out by putting my hand pointer over and it's 105 feet. Then I would switch back to Photoshop, set my uh, text command on, click by the mark and type in 105. And I'd do this back and forwards between Google Earth and back to Photoshop until I'd got all these red marks measured with a number. So if I switch to the next picture, so I ended up with a picture like this, which had all the elevation data I wanted to use marked on it. Once I've done this, I can shut Google Earth. I went into APCD and now I needed to transfer all of these points into APCD. So that was a pretty easy job as well, time consuming, but once I've got the numbers, 105 to that corner, I'd simply go into APCD, find that spot on my APCD. Let's move across. So that corner is 105. I'd then use the terrain painter technique. Let's switch it to terrain painter at density. I'd pop in a point at that point. I'd then go to verts, move, and I would look at that point, find it on the other view where I can move it in the z-axis. And while I'm on move, I can just pick it up and drag it up to 105 feet. The nearer the point you are, the more accurate you can get this, the movement. So if you want to make fine adjustments, zoom in more when you're moving verts. But as the accuracy isn't that uh, massive anyway, it's really just a, trying to get the general terrain slopes in. So I've got that point. I would then switch back to my Photoshop and to show myself that I'd now done this point, I used a white paintbrush and just painted over the red spot with a white one so that I knew that point was done. I'd then take the next point, go back into APCD, plot that, set the height, come back, mark it with a white spot. 
And once I'd finished, I'd end up with a picture in Photoshop with white spots. So I know I haven't missed any any points at all. And in APCD, if I just load in, do you want to save your changes? No. If I just load in my Mosbury uh, Park after I plotted them in, I ended up with this sort of effect where I've got all the all the verts for my elevations placed in. And if we go to a view. Although you can't really see the elevations in APCD, that's a problem anyway. You can see this hill here, Mosbury Hill on my golf course, is clearly showing, and I've got I've got all the elevation. And I found once I started work on my course, filling it in with the plants and things, I was really surprised how accurate it was. For any minor elevation changes, I use photos anyway, so. If you're using photos of the course you're working on, you can see the heights of uh, bunkers and things, so it's not really a problem. But to get the general terrain elevation in, this works pretty well, I thought. Now, once you've got all your points in, it's just a matter of tracing around the greens, the tees, using the terrain painter technique exactly the same as you would if you were creating it from shapes. You're basically using this aerial photo as all your shapes. So for this green, we'd simply go to surface, set our terrain painter, and around the green we draw. And I'll do the same for the bunkers, everything else. Just pop in a few more verts there. And then I would face these with a green texture. I'll use the one there for now. And I'll edge it so. I need to go perimeter, sharpen edges, and there we've got our green. Now the reason the texture looks very odd, it's all grainy and bobbly and blurred, is because we've still got the mapping that's made our course overhead the size it is. Remember we magnified that texture because it was displaying lots of tiny little views of the course and now we've got one big one we've got an incredible magnification set to the scale of these textures so the one thing we do need to do when we apply our new textures is change this back to the default so if we go to terrain face and select our texture coordinate mapping again we've got this highlighted what we can do if we go to select mapping, you'll see that's the planar overhead we created. We're back on default planar. All we have to do, add the default planar back in. And the texture's back to normal. If we'd set our texture to a green, and we'd made one for the greens, like a planar green, we'd set planar green and apply that. Alternatively, we could click Remove From. This will take the map, any mappings away, and because when there is no mapping, it defaults to the default planar, you'll get the same effect. So we've still got a default planar now in that space. So just work your way around your course, replacing fairways, and 
bunkers, lakes, etc. with the textures. And then last thing you'll need to do is remove all of the aerial. If we leave any of this aerial in, it will crash our game when we put the uh, put the game put the course into the game. Links will only accept textures up to 1024. APCD allows 4096, but if you leave a 4096 texture in and then try and go into the game with it, it will just crash links. So we need to get every little bit of this texture out. Now what tends to happen when you're using the Terrain Painter, you'll know from experience that occasionally you'll get two or three verts. And if you don't notice when you're painting a farewell or something, there'll be a tiny little sliver that will be created by some multiple verts. And if one of these slivers happens to have a piece of this texture in, and you don't notice and you don't manage to turn it back, you'll find it will crash when you go into links. So the easiest way to get rid of it, once you've done all your textures, everything's marked in with the textures, go to a place off plot, wherever it is, mark in a piece of the overhead texture. So if I go make that the overhead texture, I'm not sure where it's right, there it is. So if I apply the overhead texture to this, if I now go to the surface select, there's our old friend all of type. Now that will guarantee, if I click on that, that will guarantee that every single piece, wherever it is, even if it's just a little sliver, will be selected by this. Now if I then select this to rough or something else but rough is the safest texture if I then click apply I'm guaranteeing that there's no overhead texture left anywhere on this course because I've selected all of type it must turn any slivers I've missed I mean obviously we want to get rid of these slivers because if your ball lands on them it's gonna say you're on rough when you might not be so we still want to track down these slivers uh, if we can but it's far better to have it just set as a, a rough texture than as an overhead uh, that's going to crash our course and make us unable to check our course out in links so there that's about it really apart from this just follow all my normal tutorials and you should be okay